this is my Olympus EM1 Mark II. And in today's video, I want to talk to you about why this has become my primary camera for stills photography in 2024. So one of my favorite features of this Olympus EM1 Mark II is the live composite mode. It's similar to photo stacking in Photoshop. You know, when you take a bunch of photos, the same exposure, tripod, camera still, light trails and star trails, and you stack them all together, and you get something that looks like it was taken over a really long period of time, but it's a series of individual photographs. Well, that is what this camera can do all by itself. And this first photograph that I'm going to take today is going to use that live composite mode. So there's a concrete slab in front of me and the Humber Bridge in the background. I put a 10 stop filter on, a polarizing filter. F7.1 ISO 200. It's giving us a two and a half second exposure. Now, if I put live composite on and just let the shutter go for five minutes, we'll get something that looks like a long exposure photograph in lighting conditions that wouldn't normally allow for a long exposure photograph. And it's all done in camera and it outputs a raw file that's great for editing. So that photo's taken itself. I'll let it go for five minutes and I'll show you the end result. So this year I've taken this little micro fourth edge camera all around the UK. I've been to the mountains of Glencoe with it. I've been to the north coast of Scotland with it. I've been to the east coast of the UK with it. I've been to the Peak District, the Yorkshire Dales, the Yorkshire Moors, and now the Humber Bridge. And I've taken hundreds of photos this year with this camera. And in any of the weather conditions, any of the lighting conditions, any time of day, any situation that I've thrown this thing into, it's come out laughing. It's just taken it all in its stride and it's given me the results that I want. And that is always something that I feel you should have from a camera. It's something that gives you the results that you want. And this thing has always given me that and I've always enjoyed the photo taking process with it. It's so customizable. I've now got buttons set up that I can use intuitively and I know what to press to get what result. I know what to press to get what feature. And I've kind of learned this thing like the back of my own hand. Now that wasn't for a lack of me knowing how to use the camera. It was more trial and error and patience and persistence. Olympus cameras, especially these slightly older ones now, they're quite famous for having really confusing menu systems. It has features in it that I'm used to from other camera brands, but for some reason they named them completely different things and it did take me a little while to get my head around what does what and what is called what. But since I've had everything set up the way I like it, this camera has never failed to let me down. And here's just a slideshow of the photos that I've taken with it in 2024. I find it weird how two, three years ago, when I first started doing this thing, I was frightened to death to do this when there's other people about. Now, 
Humber Bridge, there's dog walkers, hikers, cars and traffic going by. It's funny how a little bit of experience and yeah, I guess I'm kind of comfortable with it these days, but yeah, it's funny, a couple of years ago, I would have never have done this at the Humber Bridge. Here's that photo. So one of the main reasons why I've never come to Humber Bridge to shoot a YouTube video or really do any kind of photography, there are only really a couple of compositions and they've kind of been done by everybody else and I try not to do that kind of thing. Uh, this shot behind me is one of the compositions and well, we're here, we might as well shoot it. I'm going to use one of my other favourite features of the Olympus EM1 Mark II, and that is the high resolution shooting mode. Natively, the camera has a 20 megapixel sensor, but the high resolution mode allows you to take 80 megapixel RAW files using the camera's pixel shift. Pixel shift, I can say that, pixel shift. Essentially, it takes a photograph and then seven other photographs moving the sensor around, the pixels overlay, pixels overlap, pixels get sliced and diced. You get smaller pixels, higher resolution, a lot more detail. And I'm also going to attempt a long exposure photograph with this, something I've never done before. So let's see how it turns out. So I'm gonna have to take this camera off the tripod, put the EM1 on the tripod, take a GoPro on the tripod, and let's see what happens. So just allow me to show you the composition that I've got on the camera. If I can zoom in a little bit, it should focus. There it is. So we've got the bridge itself just coming in. It's just one leading line. You have the sky in the background. And you may just be able to make out there is a tower in the background. Way over there. But you're kind of getting that in. It's all kinds of fun stuff. If you're curious to know how I attach a GoPro to this tripod, it's using this. The tripod itself is a Falcam tree root tripod. And this is like a quick release plate. And well, it's basically, it's like an Arca Swiss thing, but it attaches on the tripod there. It's all magnetic. You turn this screw at the back of it and it allows you just to manipulate it in any which way you want. So there's tiny little Arca Swiss plates and the GoPro sits on there and it allows me basically to GoPro on the tripod. So the composition's now set up. I've got a polarizing filter on. It's just taking some of the shine off of the bridge on the underside, so we're getting detail on the bridge it's also popping the clouds off in the background i'm not too concerned about the water with this shot because well there really isn't a lot of water in the shot so i'm just gonna try and turn on high res mode now i have to be careful here because the last time i shot high res mode i was in jpeg only but i can see on the back of the camera now if i press information i have 50 megapixel fine plus raw so that's going to give me a 50 megapixel fine jpeg photograph and the full 80 megapixel raw file which is kind of where i made a boo-boo last time so let's have a look at some camera settings let's throw this into manual mode at the moment because we are in aperture priority mode now let's see what she's giving me so i've got 10 stops so that will be down f22 we'll be sort of around f7 f8 the beautiful thing about micro four thirds cameras is the crop factor and depth of field. I shoot a lot of landscape photography where I kind of need a lot of depth of field. I don't often shoot anything where I really want to play a background. And this is where the micro four thirds really shines and performs for me because I can get more depth of field at narrower apertures than you can on a full frame or an APS-C camera. That's kind of just one of the things that draws me to this camera and this system in particular. Now, I'm down at F8, ISO 200, that's giving me a 1.6 second exposure, and I don't think that's long enough, so I'm just gonna throw a six stop filter on the front of this as well, and see where that gets us. Is that the six? 64, there is the six. If I stack this on front of that one, Boop. There we go. So now we've got 16 stops of filtering action going on. 
There we go. So down at F8, that's giving me 30 seconds. F10 is giving me 50. Here we go. Here is a 50 second long exposure, high resolution photograph on the Olympus EM1 Mark II. Hopefully it turns out all right. Because water and this thing, the stitching looks a bit iffy at times when there's movement and I'm doing a long exposure photograph and it's got to take eight of them. I've just realized how stupid this is. This is gonna take eight minutes. I'm not gonna to talk to you for eight minutes. I'll show you when it's finished. So I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching today's video around a few of the reasons why I like my Olympus EM1 Mark II so much. If you own this camera and you like it as much as I do, sound off in the comments below and tell me all of the reasons why you enjoy using the same camera that I do. So thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, please, because it does help the video and it brings new viewers to see my content. And that's always a good thing for me. And you like me, so you help me, please. Thank you. You can also press the subscribe button down below and you'll see more micro fourth heads nonsense from myself every single week. So until the next time, I'm going to love you and leave you and say peace and goodbye.